Well, good morning again. How's everybody? Wasn't that good? That's transformation, you know, and that's what we want to be about at the orchard, is, is not going through religious hoops and all that jazz. It's about souls and hearts being touched and transformed by the Holy Spirit, by the power of God. And, and so that the things that we do are not born out of duty or obligation, but they're born out of, I've been changed, and this is now how I live as a result of that. If you heard his whole story, and I've only heard a little bit of it, my gosh, and I saw tears, and th there'd be many more tears with what God has done in that man's life. So we rejoice in that. And uh, Linnell, thank you. I believe you were that other woman of faith that came in, and uh, I know you're humble about that, but thank you for just loving him. Um, and that is, by the way, I mean, th that happened through you guys. If I, you know, I'm just going to kind of do a total audible here. Um, but that happened. I mean, he came to work with you, correct? And this is the beauty. I just want to affirm um, you're in landscaping. And he came, became a part of that business. And that's how he met the Lord was through getting involved with people in a business. Man, this just makes me tear up. Getting involved with people in a business that love Jesus. And so I just want to say, this is great. We love being here on Sunday. Daniel and I love to speak and everything. But what you do Monday to Saturday is as important as what we do up here on Sunday. And that changed the life because you were the light of Christ in the work, workplace, in the marketplace. And that may be a, a, at a job, at a company. It may be in your neighborhood. It may be a stay at home with kids. And I just want to say that no matter what you do, every one of us has an opportunity to be a light for Christ that he may use us to see lives changed and transformed from the inside out. So well done, and, and thank you. Well done, all of you, and, and your, in all your roles. So anyway, uh, thank you, Lord. L let me pray. Um, um, before I do, just a couple quick things. Uh, we'll take communion at the end. Um, shoo, still catching my breath after that one. I, I just, just want to mention, um, starting next week, uh, that's why I want to mention it today because it does start next week. One of my passions is just laying out foundations of the faith, that, that, that we really understand just the foundation to faith, to finances, to marriage, to parenting. So we're going to be launching Starting next week, I start with a, a three-week class on faith. What is the foundation to faith, and what does it mean? And it's going to be a, a class that meets during the first service from 9 to 10. You can sign up. The, the QR code is in the bulletin, and as Matt said, just get his five-year-old to help you with that. If, if, if you need help on that, how to scan that and, and to register. But um, what we talk about basically, what does it mean to have faith? That it's, it's about faith going from the head to the heart. Because I think, you know, especially within Christianity today, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of belief in God, but I'm not sure if it's really transitioned into a deep faith. I'm not saying you're saved or not saved or anything like that, but just simply saying, having it go from the head to the heart, because I just know so much of my life, I walked around, and it was very much a head thing. And I was doing ministry. It was up here. And so this class is designed to help it go from here down to here, that you understand what it means to truly believe, that our, what we believe, what we start to believe what we really believe, and, and what it means to have oneness with God, where we experience his love, his joy, his peace, his patience, his kindness, his goodness his gifts in our life, as well as our purpose. What are we here for? And so, um, I'd love to have you be a part of that. You can sign up uh, afterwards out at the info desk. You can sign up by scanning that code in the bulletin. But maybe I'll see you next, next uh, Sunday at 9 a.m. Daniel will be back to preach. Um, let me pray. I want to pray, uh, especially Psalm 122, uh, verse 6. If you know that, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. A lot going on these days in the last 48 hours. So I want to pray for that, and then we'll uh, jump in on some thoughts here in our remaining time. Oh, Lord, thank you. 
that you are with us today, that you have us firmly in your hands, and you have this world firmly in your hands. I, I don't understand just the magnitude of, of all that you are and, and, and how you run everything and you know everything, you know every hair on our head, and you know uh, every detail of our life, and, and yet you run this universe, and that's mind-boggling to me, but I, I believe it. I believe it, Lord. I've seen it. I've seen you work. I've seen your miracles. I've just seen your hand change and transform people, just like we saw with Giovanni this morning. Lord, what you have done. And so we pray for you to have mercy. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, we pray for peace in the Middle East. Such a chaotic time, such a crazy time. Uh, Lord, we pray for the families that are suffering. Be with them and comfort, comfort them. Father, we just pray for peace to reign through that situation. But Lord, we know that the greatest peace comes from you. And not from uh, just simply our ceasefires or anything like that. We need that. But Lord, I pray more than anything that people will find your peace, Jesus. Um, so thank you for this morning. Thanks for this time. And just bless us as we have a little chat time here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for being here, um, here at the Orchard. Again, my name is Dan Bosco. Uh, I've been on staff here about four months now, and, and it's just a joy. I'm grateful, so grateful. And part of uh, coming in here um, when the elders and Daniel brought me on this team was to help just facilitate and build and encourage community. And so for these, these few times that I've been speaking, starting in July and then in, in September and then Today, uh, I've been just talking about this idea of community because it's near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I, I did a lot of my Christian life just kind of solo, kind of uh, isolated, doing my own thing. And, and over the years, I've just learned and experienced the value of deep, authentic community. And if you hear nothing else just here today, that w w the last thing we want for you is our as her family, as this body of Christ, is that we just go through the motions of Christianity, that we just cross, uh, cross the T's, dot the I's, and check the boxes. We're not interested in that. We, we, we want to see you connect with God, you experience God, be transformed by God in, in deep and powerful ways. And, 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 and that is a journey, and that is a process um, that we're all in. And we never arrive but we can grow and we can experience more and more. And we're never perfect, but we can grow because we know the perfect one who works in us and works through us. And so we've been talking about how community plays such a big role in that. Sundays are huge. I mean, what we do here on Sundays, so big and so important. And we're grateful to have this amazing facility, uh, amazing just, just people and staff and servants, the worship team, and, 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 and production team, and greeters, and guest services, that we're so grateful, and that, that God has brought us together. And so we've been talking about this idea of community, and the quintessential verse on that is Acts chapter 2, um, which we'll go to here, and I'll just read some of, that's, that's a, it's a game changer. When I first read this a few years back, I was like, oh, okay, I've been missing something here. Um, but starting in verse 42, it'll be up on the screen as well. It says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them. And just, just note that word, awe. And all the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying all the goodwill of people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The ultimate, I think, passage, foundational passage on what it means to be a church family, to be in community. And there was three things that I've been talking about, or two that I've talked about, and the last one I want to talk about today, you'll see them up here on the screen, that there's community and awe, just having this sense of awe in God. And that, 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 that just comes through humbly 
getting our hearts around the reality that it, this, this planet is not about us, that there's a bigger story going on, that there is a God that's running this entire universe, and that he loves us, he cares for us. And in that first week, I encourage you to ask questions like, well, where did all this come from? How long has it been here? Is it possible that all this could exist, the beauty, the creativity, just the, the, all, all the different life that we see, and whether it's animals or humans, you know, all the different life forms we see, and to say, is it possible that all this could exist and there not be a God behind it? And it's possible, but it's not probable. And that's a big discussion. But just to lay that foundation of, wow, do we wake up every day just realizing I'm sitting before the God of the universe. God is present. God is real. And, and I am aware of that. And that's one of the things that faith class is meant to be about, is just the reality of, you know, I sense God is here. I don't just believe it in my head, but in my heart. I, I know God is here. I sense his presence. I, I feel his presence. And then we talked about community and people and how people need people out of that, that verse. We talked about um, a couple other passages related to that, Romans uh, 12 primarily, and how we need one another. We all play a part. And, and you and I, we each have something to offer this church family. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how good or ugly or bad it's been. God has brought you here, and he wants to... He wants you to be a part of this family because you have something to contribute. You are an eye, you're an ear, you're a foot. That's all Romans 12. And he also says that he gives you gifts. So it could be an administration gift. It could be a, a teaching gift. He gives us all gifts to bring to the table, to use, to bless one another. So we just said, come and be a part of our community because we want you to experience all that God has for you, to experience and be used by him because there's no greater life than that. And this week, I just want to take a few minutes here and just simply talk about Philippians chapter 2 and just talk about this idea of community and sacrifice because having the awe is foundational. Having the commitment to say, you know what, we need one another is critical but then we get down to how does this look practically? And what it involves is a posture of heart that says, I'm here to be a living sacrifice for God and for one another. So let's dive into Philippians chapter 2. And we'll read a few uh, verses here and I'll make a few comments. And, and by the way, after this, we have a big old cookout, um, the police department. It's just they're grilling burgers right out there for us right now. So we hope you'll stick around and have some of that. They wanted to bless us. We do this every fall. We call it Faith in Blue. Um, and uh, I think we mentioned it earlier in the announcements. Uh, so please join us for that. But uh, chapter 2 of uh, the book of Philippians. <clears throat> so here's a, the context is Paul. And um, Paul, uh, he's written most of the New Testament. This is a book he's writing from prison. So this guy's probably in shackles, probably in chains. He's not in the best place of life and, and in a really tough spot. And these are some of his final words. Now, he, he writes some other books before he dies, but these are some of his final words before he goes. And he says this. And now he just, he just outlined, by the way, in, in chapter 1, um, he just said, hey, you know, this is who I am. This is what's been going on. And he says this amazing statement. Maybe you've heard it. To live as Christ but to die is gain. And his whole point was this. Listen, it would be so much easier right now for me to just, just get off this planet and go be in heaven because I'm in change. I've been beaten. I've been shipwrecked. I've been taken out back and thrown, uh, having stones thrown at me. But, but you know what? It would be so much easier for me to go on to heaven, but I'm going to stick around. I want to stick around for your sake. And, and so with that in mind, he, makes, uh, he comes to chapter 2, which wasn't chapter 2 to him, but he was just writing. But we have it as chapter 2. And he says this, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. 
He's saying, go be in community. Go do this community thing, but do it with a unity of of heart and mind. Just don't do it to go through the motions, but have your heart engaged in this process. And that's why awe, having a posture of heart of awe, having a posture of heart that we need one another is so important to saying, okay, we're going to be unified at all costs. We're going to be unified. We always say here at the orchard that we're going to be about one thing, and that's Jesus. We're not going to get into all the other things that we get into out there. We're going to be about talking about Jesus and unifying our faith around the person of Jesus Christ because that is foundational. And so that's what Paul is saying here. Of all things, just make me smile. And you know what? If, if, if Paul is smiling because of people doing that, you can rest assured God smiles upon that. That is God's heart for us, that we're of one mind and one purpose. And that goes for us as a body, as a church, but it goes for you in in your relationships, in your marriages, in in, in your working relationships, that, that there is a unity of mind and purpose around what you're doing. And and so, and we'll actually we'll unpack that in that faith class some. But, but so he sets it up and says, this would really make me happy, guys. I, I, I'm on my last leg here, but this would really make me happy if you're willing to do that. And they go, okay, well, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that, Paul. But then he goes on, he goes a little bit deeper, and he says this, don't be selfish, don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. Okay. He's taking it to a whole new level now. Matter of fact, this version, as it's up on the screen here, says, basically, consider others more important than yourself. Whoa. Consider others more important than yourself. Put others' interests before yours. I mean, okay, Paul, I was all right with the unity stuff, I mean, of the same mind and purpose, but now... Consider others more important than myself. Put others' interests before mine. And you're like, gosh, that's, that's kind of a big ask, isn't it? Now, is that just for you, Paul? I mean, I mean, y- y- you do that because you're an apostle. But I mean, for me, I mean, you really expect me to do that? Like, do I just do it like for a couple hours a week, maybe? Maybe, you know, once a, one day a month? But this whole phraseology in this passage is, you keep doing this. This is the way we live. That we begin to posture our heart as one of, I consider you more important than myself. Linnell, that your interest needs to be more important than mine. Now, it doesn't mean we don't take care of ourselves, we don't have to look after ourselves and things, but that we have this posture of heart that says, wow, I am on this planet to serve others. First and foremost, I tell every couple that I'm counseling for marriage, you're signing up to serve the other person. You realize that, right? Just so you know, if you're going to get married, you're not signing up to be served. You're signing up to serve. Right? And just to drive it home, I mean, I mean, we could think, oh, Paul, that's a little extreme. That's good for you, but is that really for me? He says this in the next verse. Have this attitude in yourself that was also in Christ Jesus. So, okay, maybe Paul saying you ought to do this. That's one thing. I'll try to do my best with it. But now he says, let me take it to a new level. This is just not about me. This is what Jesus did for us. So if there's any questions about whether this is something that applies to all of us, he's saying this is what our Savior did for us and have this attitude in in you. And he goes on, he says, "Though, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. In other words, to hold on to, to grasp. In other words, Jesus had this attitude of open hand. Have you guys ever clung to anything? I know I have. It's like, Lord, but I want that. I don't want to let go of that. And God's saying, please, Dan, trust me. Trust me. 
Life will be better if you let go of that. And the willingness, and it could be anything, folks. It could be a material thing. It could be a relational thing. It could be a physical thing that we're willing to say like Jesus did. He was equal with God. Okay, that's not even our situation. We're not equal with God. We're broken humans doing our best, and that's awesome. But he says, even with that, having an attitude that says, my hand is not like this, but it's like this. With everything in my life, everything, my money, my relationships, my health, my family's health, I hold an open hand because my Savior Continues on. Though he was God, did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges as God. He took the humble position of a slave and he was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and, did a, and died a criminal's death on a cross. Now, thankfully, we don't have to die on a cross for the sins of mankind. We, we wouldn't qualify for starters. Okay, but he's not asking us to do that, but he is giving us a model of Jesus that says, I am willing to set everything aside to consider others more important than myself. I'm willing to set everything aside to put other people's interests in front of mine. And he goes on and uh, says he died a criminal's death on the cross, which, you know, Obviously, that's what Christ came to do. And so I think about this, and do we have that perspective? And, and I think this is where awe, as we talked about earlier, becomes so important. Because do we realize the magnitude of God, who's running this universe, created this universe, coming down to the planet, and he didn't show up like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Worship me. I'm God. He showed up with humility. Humility as a slave. And Paul says, have this attitude in yourself that Jesus had. So folks, it's, it's, it could be really hard and it will challenge our selfishness. I can be selfish at times. And this is a real challenge at times to say, wow, I'm going to have the attitude of Christ, which means I cling to nothing, I'm willing to just lay everything down for the Lord. Again, we got to take care of ourselves. We got to keep our body running and things like that. But that we just have this posture of heart that my life is not about myself. I think I quoted this book before. Born, Purpose Driven Life, first four words. It's not about you. Because, boy, we are so tempted in this world to make it all about ourselves. And that is what he's saying here, is that it's not about you. That's the model that Jesus gave us, and that's why we can do this. And he goes on and he says, um, Therefore God elevated him to this place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus did this. He, he, he humbled himself. He became a slave. He served others. And God lifted him up. And while we'll never be lifted to the place of Jesus, there is something that Jesus said like, the first shall be last, and the last shall be what? First. Right? Well done, good and faithful servant. Out of Matthew uh, 25. In, in uh, Luke 19, he talks about the parable of the minas. And the reality that, boy, you were a great steward of what you did on earth, and in heaven, you're going to experience even this. There is a place where God lifts us up, okay? And he blesses us and he rewards us for our faithful service, for having an attitude like Christ. And this is why, if you've noticed it out there, we have this new thing called the Volunteer Central. Because what we want to do let me put it this way. There are people that show up here very early on Sunday morning, as well as throughout the week, and they serve you. 
and they serve me. This worship team serves us getting here early. And they're here well past the second service. And we wanted to have a place to say, we want to just lift you up with a little bit, just give you a little earthly taste of your future heavenly experience for your faithfulness to serve. And we want to have Volunteer Central so that you have a place to go and we have food in there for you, we have drinks in there for you, bagels and cream cheese and all that stuff so that we can say thank you for what you're doing. Well done, good and faithful servant. And that's why we do that, because we want to honor our volunteers. We want to give them a little taste of what God thinks of them living their life as a sacrifice here on Sunday mornings. So we're just grateful for those of you who are serving. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. And may we just honor you with that. And what's also amazing about that idea is that I wish I could unpack this completely. We only see a taste of it in the scriptures. But while our earthly work does not determine whether we go to heaven, that's determined through our faith in Christ, believing in him, receiving him, trusting him with our life, that is our entrance into heaven someday. But our stewardship of what we do with our life on the planet seems to have an impact on our future heavenly experience. The reality that how I live, as he said in, in Luke 19, well done, you who, who took care of 10 cities. In heaven, you're going to have 10 countries. The, 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 there's something tied to our stewardship and our experience in heaven is related to how we steward it, what he gave us on the earth to steward, be it our finances, our family, our church. And so, as we wrap this up, he goes on and he, he, he talks about, so work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There should be an awe to our, 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 our working this thing out, which literally means exercise. I just want to invite you into something. Three things to take away today. Continue to live in awe. You got questions about that? You feel like you're not experiencing that? Come talk to me. I would love to journey with you on what it means to live in the awe of God. We never do it perfectly. I don't do it perfectly. But man, what I have tasted of, I just rejoice in God. I'll take that over anything on the planet. And I want to help you experience that. We want to help you experience that. Get involved in a community group. I just want to applaud you. We have a couple hundred people involved in community groups in our church now. Over 20-something groups. And thank you for responding to that message last month. And just signing up and getting involved. We're still working out. We got so many folks, I'm still trying to sort it all out, which is a great problem to have. Um, and get everybody kind of recommended to different options. But lastly, sign up to serve at least one time a month on one of our teams. You know, uh, like I say, if we have a posture, don't do it out of obligation, but out of a posture of heart that says, you know, Lord, Jesus served me. And as Mark 10, 45 says, Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom. We should have that same attitude. We're not here to be served. We're here to serve. So I invite you, I encourage uh, each of you to just find a place. If you, if you click on that form in the bulletin, just click on that QR code. It'll bring you to a form, and you can just pick a place to serve. Do it once a month, twice a month if you got the time. Or once every other month, whatever works for you, we'll meet you where you're at. But our heart is to develop more and more within our church body a posture of serving one another because that's what Jesus did for us. Amen? Um, let me pray. Lord, matter of fact, let's take communion together. Um, he broke his body. This is what this is all about, coming in union with him. 
Uh, he broke his body so that we could have this experience of him, so that he could change us from the inside out and lead us and empower us to be his servants on this planet. That we could serve one another with our gifts and our, our, our talents. And so I invite you to uh, take the body of Christ. This is his body that was broken for us. In the same way, his blood was shed for us. This represents his new life that was given for us. Let's drink this in remembrance of him. Amen. Thank you, Lord.